Welcome back, traders and investors. We have Darren Heitner here, who is a partner at the Wolf Law Firm. He's going to talk about his new book, How to Play the Game, and also some other things that are going on in the sports world. Darren, how are you doing today? I'm doing well. How are you? Ah, we're doing good here on Benzinga's pre-market prep. So, a lot has been in the news with old Donald Sterling here, and it uh, looks like the NBA is going to get his wish for him to uh, to sell the team. And uh, I, look, I, I read your article about, um, hey, maybe to get the most money out of this sale is maybe for him to do an IPO. We, could you talk about that a little bit? Yeah, that was actually written by one of my contributors at uh, Sports Agent Blog, a publication that I run. Um, it's an interesting concept, one that I'm sure the NBA would never really consider or take seriously. Uh, it would it would basically take a lot of the power out of the NBA's hands and put it into the public. And while it's it's a very innovative concept, the NBA, as you can see from the Constitution and bylaws, which were disseminated at the beginning of this whole Donald Sterling saga, uh, provides the NBA and the commissioner in particular with the very expansive powers. If you put a team in the hands of the public, it's not as easy as it may have been for Adam Silver, the commissioner, and the Board of Governors to necessarily take the team away if a, a set of circumstances occur. Um, so I don't see it ever happening, although it, it may drive the price of a team and the value of a team even higher than what we see now with the potential sale of the Clippers to Steve Ballmer, former Microsoft CEO, to the tune of two billion dollars. Holy mackerel! Uh, now you did you did have uh, did it the the Celtics? Weren't, didn't they uh, weren't they a publicly traded company in the past? Um, I'm not entirely certain about that. Again, you'd probably have to. Uh, ask my contributor about okay. the specifics okay. of his article on the IPO. But again, I think it would be a very innovative, but but probably uh, a concept that the NBA would abhor uh, because, again, it would just take too much power away from the commissioner and its surroundings. And uh, the reason, like, they have, uh, you know, Madison Square Garden as a publicly traded company because it's just not the Knicks. It's the MSG Network. It's the venues. So that's a, it's a much more diversified company, and that way they can get right. around the NBA uh, the NBA rules. So, okay, so you're not really expecting that to happen. So Balmer talking about $2 billion, huh? That's unbelievable the money that guy's going to get for it. Okay, another interesting thing that's been going on uh, has been the Vernus Davis IPO here. Is that going to be a new trend? Well, you know, we have this company called Fantex, which has received approval of the National Football League and the Players Association to conduct business. And the way that it conducts business is to basically buy a piece of a player's future income. And that is made up of both on-field income and marketing, endorsement, other off-field opportunities. So what Fantex does is it buys a percentage of what it believes to be the future value of that player's quote-unquote brand and then sell off what it calls a tracking stock to individuals who are interested in that particular player and basically indirectly investing in the player. As you mentioned, Vernon Davis for the 49ers was the very first one, although it should be noted he was not supposed to be the first IPO. In fact, there was supposed to be Houston Texans running back Arian Foster. And according to Fantex, there's still plans to have his IPO in the future. We've also heard about Buffalo Bills quarterback E.J. Manuel, who's going to have an IPO. So, yes, this does, at least for the time being, appear to be somewhat of a trend that is going to continue in time as long as Fantex has and continues to have the blessing of both the NFL and the Players Association. And it's just so far for the NFL, it hasn't been uh, approved by the NBA or uh, MLB or NHL? From discussions with Fantex's CEO, Buck French, I'm told that the company definitely has plans to expand beyond the NFL and get into the NBA, get into Major League Baseball, and even associate itself with a variety of uh, individual athletes who are not necessarily part of professional sports leagues. So think about extreme sports, uh, for instance, uh, maybe mixed martial arts participants, etc. 
So that is the plan for the time being. I'm not aware of the company getting any particular blessing, per se, from the leagues or from players' associations, but at least based on the NFL and the players' association in that league signing off on it, I wouldn't imagine that there will be too many constraints going forward. Can you, can you, sh- I mean, if it's a market, it's an IPO market, there's trading, can, can you short players? Obviously, if someone's taking one side of the trade, someone's taking the other side of the trade. So, yeah, I would, I would think so. You know, because um, I'll tell and, you, and, you know, I'll tell is- you, I, I think this is a horrible idea. I, I really have to be <laughs> honest with you. And I don't think it's going to go at all. Because why would you invest money in Vernon Davis? Vernon Davis, I mean, you know, and it's also the future mm-hmm. earnings of things. But, I mean, and I'm not a big conspiracy theorist, but what if you're, you know, you, you're just short all this Vernon Davis, okay? And, you you know, you pay another player on another team to go take his knee out. I mean, especially mm-hmm. in the NFL. I mean, players are so well, we're in agreement there. Yeah, okay. I, I think we're in agreement there. I'm, I'm not, from every standpoint other than the athlete standpoint, I'm not a fan of the idea. I would never put my own money no into way. this tracking stock of a player. That said, think about it from the player's standpoint. So Vernon Davis has a lot of non-guaranteed income on the field for the future and also has no idea what he's going to necessarily get off the field in endorsements, appearances, etc. Why not take a piece of that unknown slash non-guaranteed income make it guaranteed and payable today. Uh, So for the athlete, it's somewhat a beautiful concept. On the other hand, I would also be a little concerned. So right now you have Vernon Davis, who purportedly is seeking a new contract and may even be sitting out for some time. Well, if you're a holder of this tracking stock and and the value of your stock goes down because there's some concern about Vernon Davis's future over these negotiations, do you have an action against the player? I mean, I would take the position no, but we're in a very litigious society. The fact that it's a tracking stock does not necessarily prevent somebody from wanting to take action against Vernon Davis. I mean, you feel as though you've been spurned. You want to take action against that individual that indirectly you're invested in. So I would be a little concerned as the athlete or maybe even the representative of the athlete, even though there is this very nice um, upfront payment that you're receiving in exchange for a piece of your future non-guaranteed unknown income. Yeah, I mean, I, I just, uh, to me, the, you know, the risk of the player getting hurt. Um, I think another big, big risk to, you know, all the sports uh, uh, leagues is, you know, the TV money. And, I mean, it's there. And they are competing, and they're falling over each other. But, man, if someone else steps into the game, I mean, these contracts that they're getting for pro football uh, and whatnot are just outrageous. Do you, do you see that? Do you see the networks just paying more and more money to the to the leagues? Because that's the reason that you have these outrageous salaries. Well, that's entirely correct. The, the large salaries and the expansion of salary caps and the leagues that have those caps, it's, it's a byproduct of the, mainly it's a byproduct of the expansion of these television deals. Uh, they're remarkable, and they're going up year by year. And, and there are a lot of people that are following this particular trend and wondering if and when, you know, it plateaus. What, what happens at that point in time, and will the market basically retract? Will there be a, eventually a decrease in the amount of money that's paid to players? You know, I think what, what's really interesting, though, is, is you know, this, this whole issue of the Los Angeles Clippers. Think about the fact that you have an individual, one individual now paying $2 billion for a franchise. So an article that I wrote on Forbes this morning actually looks at some of the reactions from different sports agents. And one of them, which I put at the top of the article, basically says, you know, how do people complain about the salaries that players get after something like this? You have the NFL where salary caps are basically, for 2014, capped at $133 million per team with a little bit of adjustments here and there. You know, what is Steve Ballmer looking at when he buys the team for such an exorbitant amount of money? One of those things is the renegotiation of a TV deal. Yeah. Not only for his team, but on the national level. 
Yep, that's it. That's what it's all tied to. So we've had Darren Heitner on here, partner at Wolf Law Miami, uh, talking about uh, the I potential IPO for the Clippers. But, hey, you get $2 billion. I don't think that's going to happen. Also, the regulations from the NFL. Talking about fan tax and, uh, you know, IPOing for players. Uh, we share similar views on that. Darren, it's great having you on. It's nice to talk sports, get a little different perspective here on a slow day in the market, Benzinga's pre-market prep. Uh, have a good day. We'd like to have you on again. Thanks so much for having me. Okay. All right. Thank you, Darren Heitner, Wolf Law Miami.